are these people? Our first story is the wonderful Laura Kay from Normal Island News, friend of the show. Um, we seem to be doing one of her stories every week, and we could start this week with a little bit of levity, only because this is in such praise of the American students. American university, university students arrested for embarrassing Israel. This is definitely not cancel culture. Now, this entire article is written completely with tongue in cheek, and I adore Laura Kay for it. I don't know how she manages to do this every single day or a few times a week. If you can subscribe to her, Normal Island News, normalisland.co.uk, look her up. She's on Facebook. She's on Twitter. She's great. Her latest, and I would lo and I love reading her articles, in super exciting news, the people who have unwaveringly backed Israel's genocide from the start have proven they're on the right side of history by sending mass cops to arrest students and professors who are committing the terrorist act of peaceful protest. <laughs> Obviously, brutal crackdowns on academia are only bad when Iran or China do them, and in this case, should be applauded. If you're unclear of why this is happening, Benjamin Netanyahu made a totally sane speech demanding the U.S. crackdown on peaceful protests that he doesn't like. Netanyahu's request came just days after Israel told the U.S. to stop meddling in its internal affairs. Uh-huh. Personally, I think it's bye brilliant. Bye, Israel! Yeah. Personally, I think it's brilliant that the U.S. Constitution only applies until the president of a foreign country with a powerful lobbying group decides it's inconvenient. At that point, you can shove your First Amendment up your ass, and that's American for arse, because she's British. And <laughs> shout out to Laura for that. British. British. I was up. Uh, I think at one point I tried to maybe do this in the Queen's English, and it was really awful. So just I'm abandoning that and doing mm. it in my own voice. Not long ago, universities were talking about how important free speech on campus is, even if it's speech normal people dislike. Emory mm -hmm. University in Atlanta, we're going to talk about them later, ignored these free speech values because they in, were intended to ensure Ben Shapiro would not be canceled before he could explain why he hated the Barbie movie so much. Now that Ben has had yeah. his rant, free speech doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Uh, Emory University sent armed enforcers into campus to fire rubber bullets and tear gas at the scariest people in America. The decision presumably had the approval of the U.S. president, who had spent the week smearing the protesters as anti-Semites, naturally. Yeah, antiseptics. Right. This is yeah. the standard tactic to delegitimize critics of Israel. I understand the president is now considering whether to stand by his original position or pretend he was on the student's side all along. Given he tried to shake hands with a ghost recently, anything's possible with this man. Recently? Doesn't he do that every week? Well, that's that's what she means recently. But among Emory's targets was Noel McAfee, chair of the university's philosophy department, who armed cops Not heroically to be confused with the poop through a hammock. McAfee. No, 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 not John McAfee. I don't believe she's any relation. But <laughs> he's the chair of the philosophy yeah. department, who armed cops heroically captured without taking casualties. Heroically. Honestly, mm -hmm. these men are as brave Heroic. as the IDF soldiers who try on women's underwear before setting their houses on fire. And I wish that was a joke. Yep. Footage clearly showed the unarmed middle-aged white woman being cuffed by a masked man was Hamas. Yes, in the... Hamas. Balaklava. Balaklava. Fucking put it on, man. You look fucking scary, man. <laughs> You'll be relieved to hear uh, that these super brave cops felt... I'm sorry to make levity of this, but we have to laugh a little bit. And believe me, we're going to get heavy, and I will probably never. end up crying by the end of tonight. But I, you, she, you, she, you, you get hung if you don't have gallows humor. That's she breaks me, and I love her. And, and thank you, Laura, for this. Mm -hmm. Um... You'll be relieved to hear that three super brave cops felt the need to tase a student who they had pinned down and cuffed. Then they knelt on his back. Ordinarily, they would have knelt on his throat, but they wanted to show restraint to make it clear that they're the good guys. If you know anything yeah. about history, you know cops who are violent towards students protesting war are always on the right side of it. Mm -hmm. A total of 93 thought criminals in were taken. Germany. Yes, yes, exactly. A total of 93 thought criminals 
were taken hostage at the Emory crackdown, presumably to be re-educated in room 101. Reassuring, reassuringly, many of the hostages were taken away in unmarked vans, so no one has a clue what's happening to them. Basically, they're getting the, the hostages. Power. Yep. They, <laughs> that's brutal oh. it is isn't it <laughs> basically they're getting the Palestine treatment but we in the media will ignore it because they're all terrorists or something other universities across the US have also taken their to their fair share of hostages of course it's hope that mass arrests along with the TikTok ban will endear young people to Israel and Help them realize that genocide is just as woke as they are. If not, their lives will be mm -hmm. destroyed because it's only what they deserve. Any students or professors who have evaded capture can stop being smug because Israelis say they will, they will use facial recognition technology to ensure that they're unemployable, which I'm sure you agree is a brilliant justification for the existence of facial recognition technology. I bet you're yep. super comfortable with cameras scanning your face without your consent now, aren't you? Israel, sack anyone who disagrees with us machine is about to get at least a thousand percent more efficient. What do you I'd mean? Rather, I'd rather have facial recognition used in my workplace to see if I'm like effectively happy enough for capitalistic usage. You know? Well, well wait a like, minute. If I'm sad, it electroshocks me and wakes me up again. I feel happy. You know? Yeah, so, sure. Um, that that's your Apple Model Three sleeve like collar, a much right? Idea. Is that your Model Three at sleeve least, collar from Jesse Jet? At least Model Three. If if you're still wearing a Model Three sleeve collar, what are you? Well, ha, it, it does it does offer more movement than the Tesla X Elite. I mean, um, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So, yep. what do you mean? This sounds like one of those terrifying dystopias science fiction warned us about. All you have to do is comply with the death cult, and it will spare you. Yeah. Laura. Makes, makes total sense. Bravo, Laura. Once again, you break me, and I love you, and oh, uh, my goodness. Um, yeah. So, so there's that. Um, we can start there with, with Laura, because it's not going to get any prettier than that, folks. Um, again, welcome to everybody who's here. How do we miss that? Is live every Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, um, 7 p.m. Pacific on INN, Indie News Network, Indie News dot Network. Go subscribe, support, share all the links. You got YouTube, you got all the social media, you got Rumble, you got Rockfin, ad free over on Rockfin. Okay, so we've got next. Holy crap! Now we're gonna get into the schools, but. From a different kind of angle, because um, I wanted to specifically look at it from a, an angle, which is Sam Husseini, Indie Media Award Honoree 2023 class. Thank you. Did Columbia University violate the First Amendment? My guess is yes. Um, I'm going to go with yes. I'm going to go with yes. But he says that it's commonly argued that private groups can't break the First Amendment, but there's an exception if there's entanglement quote unquote between the private entity and the government and it looks like there was so what's going on here of course the traditional dobke folk dance right okay so defending rights and dissent in their recent letter to Colombia president Manu Shafiq which has lots of good information stated although quote although Columbia University is a private institution not governed by the first amendment the role of state actors, in this case, members of Congress, in instigating the action would raise serious First Amendment concerns, unquote. This might seem odd to people. I didn't really think about it myself. Many people think that private groups can disregard the First Amendment, which only limits government action. But, however, defending rights and dissent is perfectly correct in noting that this case may be different. He says, the group adds that, quote, even if the First Amendment could not be found to apply, it would still be a serious breach of norms of academic freedom, Under quote, un unquote, of course. But if you examine, as defending rights and dissent indicates, 
the interaction between Shafiq and members of Congress, it could be worse. Just before she called the police on student protesters, it certainly appears that Shafiq got her marching orders from the government at the congressional hearings. Former head of the ACLU, Nadine Strassen, told me in an interview in 2021, thank goodness for Sam Husseini, while discussing big tech platforms in the First Amendment, quote, even private sector actors are directly bound by constitutional norms, including the First Amendment free speech guarantee, if you can show that there is legal term to describe this is called entanglement, sufficient entanglement between the government officials and the nominally private sector actors, that if they're essentially conspiring with the government and doing the government's bidding, the government can't do an end run around its own constitutional obligations that way. Really important connotation right there. So Sam is saying, thus the argument could be made that Shafiq was effectively coerced by Congress and allowed Colombia to be entangled with the U.S. government doing its bidding by calling the police on the students. Yep. And it should be noted that Shafiq's background is not what one might expect from a university president. The short background are from Max Blumenthal, who notes that she's on the board of the Bill and, Lin Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, quote, owes her entire career to the transatlantic oligarchy and has no space in which to defy it, unquote. Kind of like the woman who took over at NPR, too. It's like there's been a, a corporate takeover of all the major academic institutions mm. and thought. There's, a, there's yeah. a revolving door between big business, politics, and media. Well, I mean, that's... And the deep state, I mean, there's... I mean, that's how it works? Sure. But no. also, no, Yale economics that. professor Ahmed Mushik Mubarak notes that she, ha she well, only she has one... One well-cited publication in her life, goodness, and accuses her of effectively stealing it from a junior author. Going to the protests at George Washington University last night, which Sam did, one thing that struck me was how many of the students were wearing masks or using a kafia uh, to cover their faces uh -huh. or, a, or a souk. Yeah, Some yeah, have yeah. claimed it's a COVID thing, but no, it's clearly largely so they don't get exposed and get doxxed by pro-Israeli groups on campus and potentially yeah, so have their facial careers facial recognition ruined. doesn't end their like, career. The fact that that can happen is bullshit already. Right. You know? But, like, then they're going to use the fact that, like, anyway, you right. know, so, they, they, no one was upset at people in China doing it during the Hong Kong but, you know, now, like, okay. Yeah. 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 Independent journalist Daniel Lazar gives a good breakdown of the proximate causes of entanglement or coercion that may show a violation of the First Amendment. His quote is, Columbia President Shafiq was testifying at a congressional hearing in Washington. The former Bank of England deputy governor twisted nervously in her seat as a succession of right-wing Republicans denounced a volcano of anti-Semitism that is supposedly erupting on college campuses and demanded to know what she was going to do about it. A cross-examination by Lisa... Volcanoes. Right? And a cross-examination by Lisa McLean, an arch-conservative from the rural fringes of northern Detroit, was typical. What's your definition of anti-Semitism? Remember, folks, I'm Jewish. This is all nonsense. It's the season narrative, okay? And it's to paint everybody who disagrees with their narrative as anti-Semitic, which is not the case. This mm -hmm. is anti-murdering children with U.S. bombs and sending them the money to buy them on top of it. What the hell are we doing? Quote, Shafiq, Shafiq, for me, personally, any discrimination against people for their Jewish faith is anti-Semitism pointing out that she had established a university task force to investigate it, McLean asked if members agreed. I, I'm pretty sure they would share that same definition, she said, looking more and more uneasy. And then the Michigan Republicans zeroed in for the kill. And then here we go. And I'm, you know, are the mobs shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free or long live the Intifada? 
are those anti-Semitic comments? Well, no. if they watched INN News, we would we would long we, we we would know all about that first phrase and how that is a cry for freedom. Um, Reef and Colin covered that very well on INN News, and I'm sure in the link in the description at some point, and I'm sure in the in the chat, maybe he'll drop that link for the folks to be able to watch that later on, but. He says, that's a great question that I didn't get to ask. So let me repeat, are those anti-Semitic statements? Yes or no. It's not how you feel. It's, well, I hear them as such. Some people don't. Um, was that yes? Was that yes? So they're trying to pin her down and get her to, to admit something so that they can then paint her as also anti-Semitic because she is accepting of other people's views um, about what those phrases mean. And she's at least willing to have a conversation about them and not smear them as antiseptic, as Reef likes to call them. Yep. Uh, so Shafiq says it's because it's a difficult issue. Some people define it as anti-Semitic. Other people do not. Correct. Like, like many Torah Jews and anti-Zionist Jews. That understand that the backlash upon non about all Jews is going to be so much worse and is already so much worse. And we beg them and warn them against doing this the entire time. And they just insist not only that, but they're continuing to move and do more. Just wonderful. So mm -hmm. after hemming and hawing, Shafiq finally gave in. Such slogans she conceded were indeed beyond the pale. So yes, you do agree that these are anti-Semitic behavior and there should be some consequences to that anti-Semitic behavior. We're in agreement, yes. Yes, she replied. She finally got in line, and she finally got the message, apparently. Mm -hmm. Gross. Gross. She had gotten her marching orders. Returning to New York, she called the police less than 24 hours later and requested them to clear the field. More than 100 students were arrested on trespassing charges and hit with academic suspensions. Joe Biden, among others, issued a statement in support. Of course he did, fucking scumbag. Piece of shit. Go no sip. Okay. What what he said was the ancient story of persecution against Jews in the Haggadah on Passover also reminds us that we must speak out against our alarming surge of anti-Semitism in our schools, communities, and online. Silence is complicity. Even in recent days, we've seen harassment and calls for violence against Jews. This is blatant anti-Semitism, and it's reprehensible and dangerous. And it has absolutely no place on college campuses or anywhere in our country. Except that's not what's fucking happening, Joe. You know the, you know the thing. Piece of shit. This is all a lie being spun. Stop bombing children and the kids will go home. Stop bombing children and the kids will fucking go home. Oh, yeah, and stop making deals with Israel and the people who bombed children for six months unabated. Seven months, sorry. Yeah. Further, you recent, further, and most recently, you had House Speaker Mike, Mike Johnson, of course, uh, go to Colombia and make further demands. <laughs> he also made baseless claims about Hamas slaughtering babies on October 7th, which, of course, have been debunked regularly, and the people who recanted their stories, something several outlets have debunked in detail, and Sam, of course, called back in October. Okay, Israel falsely claimed that Hamas slaughtered babies, so it could actually slaughter babies, and that is reality. You can take me down if you like. I don't give a crap, because we're live on Rockfin and Rumble. You better find us over there if they decide that, that what we said is not cool. But Sam's saying that here. Then we also have, once again, uh, later on in the week, follow up on that article. A few additional notes after writing that. Yes, bad cookies, but, but, but Republicans, Indy, thank you. That is correct. But you know what? But, but the Republicans are just as guilty in all of this. They're just as complicit. They're right on board with all this shit. All right. A few additional notes can, uh, following up, which I wrote, it's commonly argued that private groups cannot break the First Amendment. But there's an exception if there's the entanglement, right? It looks like there was. So what do we mean? This was the other article that he had written, and I love Sam. 
Shout out to Sam. Sam is doing yeoman's work in the White House press room, in the State Department press rooms, on Substack. If you can support him, even by subscribing, husseini.substack.com, H-U-S-S-E-I-N-I, 25-year independent journalist. Fucking phenomenal guy. Absolutely phenomenal. All right. We don't always have to agree with everyone, but understand where they're coming from and understand that they that they have only incentive to bring the truth and to expose the corruption and the lies. All right. Coming to a Substack newsletter near you. Yeah, so will she at some point. I guarantee it. So Empire swallows everything. Oh, so what he, yeah, it looks like there was so Empire swallows everything. It weaponizes everything from human rights to feminism to biomedical research to the university. Columbia calling on the police effectively paved the way for other universities to do so, most notably the University of Texas, which is public, and Emory, which has extensive ties to the CDC with government funding. Therefore, they are an extension of the government in a lot of ways. And I brought some footage, so we're going to watch some. So Sam says, as, as, as I saw footage, videos of security forces. Sorry? As, 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 as I saw? As, as I saw. As, as I saw. As I saw. <laughs> am I slurring? That's what happens when you get out. A little bit. No, no, we don't do that. Shh. We're in a legal with, state. We're in a legal state. I'm an adult. All right. Ah. Uh, I like ice cream. Yeah, if you listen to if cream. you listen, yeah. if you listen to the, the the tracks beforehand, we played Speaker of the House. Anyway, and that was on Friday night too. Friday night Jesse show, man, Jesse Cliff show. That is a blast. If you everybody should show up and watch that. It's just a chill time. All right. So, as I saw videos of security forces brutally throwing down students, media workers, and even professors to the ground, I was reminded of Karl Marx's adage: "Quote." When the train of history hits a curve, the intellectuals fall off. The video above is a manifestation of the fascist underbelly of U.S. society, usually unseen or ignored by many liberals. Or encouraged because scratch are liberal and we know what happens. Many U.S. police forces have received training from Israel. See Jewish Voice for Peace Report, Deadly Exchange, the dangerous consequence of American law enforcement trainings in Israel. I believe you've covered some of that. On INN News as well, too, haven't you, Reef? I believe so. Okay, believe and I think we've have. covered it. We've covered it in the past here as well. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Vanessa McRae, I don't know who Vanessa McRae is, reports that quote in an overwhelming vote Friday afternoon, the faculty senate for Emory University's College of Arts and Sciences decided to hold a college-wide no confidence vote in President Gregory Fenves. Now you've got some serious shit going on. Now you've got the faculty revolting against the, the university administration. Reader M. Miller makes several great points, including, quote, I wonder if government entanglement with a private entity, in this case Columbia University, also in, ensues from grant support, in which case there are more strands to the web. Yep. So any university that's getting government grant funding would then be subject to First Amendment enforcement, all right? Elizabeth mm -hmm. Ferrari notes that the government pressuring of Ferrari, the government pressuring of President Shafiq extended beyond congressional hearings and included statements on Twitter, of course, by the douchebag Arkansas Senator Tom Carton, Cotton, not Carton, Cotton. <laughs> Quote, the nation pogroms um, at Columbia. Um, Sounds like a fucking cartoon that Marlboro designed. The nation um, pogrom. Carton. Okay, again, quote, the nation pogroms at Columbia have to stop today, which don't exist, before mm -hmm. our Jewish brethren sit for Passover Seder tonight. Except they held one outside at the thing and police arrested them. And we're going to show that too. If Eric Adams won't mm -hmm. send the NYPD and Kathy Hochul won't send the National Guard, Joe Biden has a duty to take charge and break up these blogs. Right. Pepper spray mm. those kids. Fuck Tom Cotton so bad. <laughs> all right. Which, of course, was ridiculous, least of all because the student protests had tons of Jewish students and had satyrs, but 
Yet he persisted, just like Elizabeth Warren. Joe Biden has a duty to protect Jewish students on campuses like Columbia <laughs> and NYU from what are nation pogroms. Okay, that is clearly a talking the point. Duty. That I, we know we know exactly who that's coming from because we called that shit out. All right, that's Frank Luntz. All right, mm. who went to Israel and gave them talking points and fed them to Republican senators as well. These are coming directly from APAC. By the way, mm. fuck you, Tom Cotton. You're a traitor to the United States. And you fought for this country, and it's a disgrace. Now, per M. Miller's comments, Sp Speaker Mike Johnson threatened Columbia's federal funding. <laughs> yep. Quote, today I saw firsthand even... the radical mob, quote-unquote, that... Uh, that is allowed to run amok on campus, spouting anti-Semitism and threatening Jewish students, which they haven't. As we saw by the woman standing in the middle of Yale University screaming, I'm a Jew, and nobody gave a flying fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's a great Halloween costume, though, if you, if you need one last minute. All right. If universities you know? don't get it under control, it'll escalate. Taxpayer dollars should not be going to institutions that allow this chaos. Taxpayer dollars should not be going to institutions that have billion dollar endowments either. Mikey. As did Rep. Elise Stefanik, another APAC bought and paid for representative. <clears throat> She's notably on the House Committee on Education and the Workforce and on subcommittees on higher education, workforce investment. And workforce protections. <laughs> what a joke. Mm -hmm. She's also on House Armed Services Committee, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and particularly, ironically, the subcommittee, select subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government. Yes, she knows exactly how to do that, doesn't she? Because I believe, oh no, she's not the one that was a CIA agent. That was somebody else that she, she actually beat a CIA agent. To win her seat, if I remember correctly. I looked into her. I mean, she might have just joined them. That's that old adage. Can't beat them. She says that you she know? demanded action. She's from upstate New York, um, I believe, from Education Secretary Cardona, who's in enough heat on his own. DOJ Attorney General Garland, fuck him for not dropping the charges against Julian Assange. Drop the charges, free Julian Assange. And Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas, again, who just had an impeachment thing dropped against him, but he was in some heat to address the out of control, anti-Semitic Ecofer of Columbia. No, it is. It, well, this is their joke because they passed a bill that says anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. So automatically any Jews that are standing yeah. up against this are, are anti-Semites themselves, which is hilarious because Palestinian people are Semites. And these are the most anti-Semitic motherfuckers on the planet other than the Israeli mm -hmm. government and the Likud party. And we're going to let Abby Martin finish us out talking about that. She wants to revoke any federal funding for Columbia University. Again, totally fine with that. You can take your funding and get the fuck out of here. Revoke the student visas of yeah. those who are brazenly endorsing terrorism. That's insane because what about the Americans? You're only going to take away the foreigners? Absolutely not, number one. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Right? Uh, and then where she also wants to publish the findings of the Title VI investigation into Colombia following the October 7th attack. I am oh. altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Of which how many IDF soldiers murdered Israeli citizens? Oh, right. No, we can't talk about that. Or all the stuff that's been debunked about Zaka that told lies about cutting and raping heads. Ridiculous. Nonsense. Okay. So, possible resource is a timeline, though it's, of course, by Fox. And he says, um, I first recall, you know, he's got a little thing, uh, a footnote there. But again, subscribe to Sam Husseini, husseini.substack.com, doing absolute yeoman's work. Okay, fuck, Google is over here on uh, on Rumble. And where are where is everybody over on Rumble? Hope you're, hope you're out there doing well. Rumble, kick ass. Um, he can't chat now, but that's okay. We, we're just happy you're here listening and we're going to be going for a while. So you're welcome to hang with us. Um, now part of this story is 
This is something I never thought I would see. Snipers Ooh. on the roof. Snipers? If, if you Sniper went to on if, the roof. If you literally went to Twitter and in the search bar typed university snipers, you would get an entire treasure trove today of images that looked like this. <laughs> Sniper on the roof at IMU, that's Indiana Moorha Morehouse University. Absolutely unhinged response to a non-violent encampment by a murderous and paranoid police state. All these people that are saying that it's murderous and violent, there's been zero violence from the protesters. The only violence has been from the police and from the Zionists that are trying to stoke violence in order to promote this, this narrative that there is violence. It's only coming from them. Mm -hmm. Hey, how about this? Wait, what? Day three of snipers at Indiana University with admin escort for the Gaza encampment. Hmm. Enemy spotted. Wait, what? Yep. Image description, hashtag alt text Palestine. Two snipers dressed in camo with massive heavy backpacks and sniper rifles sneaking out the top, walk through a building at Indiana University, escorted by a member of university administration. Wow! Incredible! Hey, how about that? So... Hey, look at that! Ohio State! Ohio State getting in on it. But wait a minute. Joe Loria retweets this from Trita Parsi. And who's Trita Parsi? They are the executive VP from the Quincy Institute, author of Losing an Enemy and Treacherous Alliance, right? This is Ohio State University mm -hmm. tonight. Back in November, Biden officials predicted that the outrage over Israel's slaughter in Gaza would fizzle out in a few weeks. Is that working out? <laughs> Media. Nice, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. Thank you. Thank you, officers. Much appreciated. But of course, our favorite app that might be going away sooner rather than later, we'll see. Um, TikTok. Here's another one from OSU. Where they were literally fucking doing what? Praying. Tick tack toe, a winner. That's what the students are doing. They're holding the cops back. Uh, so, and that's got, um, 1.9 million views on tick uh, likes on TikTok. Mm. The kids are all right. That's all I can say. Don't worry, everybody. A spokesman for Ohio State University said that there were no snipers overlooking protesters. <laughs> Don't believe uh -huh. you're lying. You're lying eyes. Eyes. Those are cameramen. Cameramen. <laughs> I, love, I love how it's in front of the union. Ohio union. Unity. And we talked about um, Emory, Emory University earlier. <laughs> Emory University professor Caroline Folin at a pro-Palestine demo on campus on Thursday. She was seen questioning a police officer who was arresting a protester before she was thrown to the ground and cuffed. <laughs> Yes, and they're happy to. Oh you people are fascists. You right, DJ, right away. You are happy dog. Shame on you. May you never have another day. <laughs> Jesus. I am a professor, everyone. I am a professor. You are rabid dogs. You are fascists. 
It was a peaceful protest until they started fighting troopers. Until they what? Until you started trying to move the line? Until you started trying mm -hmm. to infiltrate their shit and attacking students? What? I'm going to say on this. Please remove the handcuffs. Shout out to Middle East Eye for the yep. footage. Give them a follow. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna read. We got we we got some more Middle East Eye coming up. They're doing excellent excellent coverage. Here's a little bit of levity in between because we had some earlier with Laura Kay, and that was pretty heavy stuff. Uh, before we do, let's go check on chat and see how everybody's doing. Woo! Heavy shit. Heavy shit. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome to those on INN, Twitch, Indie Left, uh, Indie and INN over on the YouTubes, Rockfins, Rumbles. We got everybody in the house. This is so cool. Uh, I love you all. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, bad cookies. Look at it fizzle. Can't agree more. You know what? Let me let me switch to this view. The chat the chats go up better. Gamer, those cops are evil. I have a hard time arguing with you on that one. You know, at KYE piggies be piggin'. Yeah, um, it's 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 gross. It's disgraceful. Um uh, fan practice, yes. Serenity now! Serenity now! Kent State is inevitable. Repeat. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We started actually with um, with Jesse Jets. Kent State engaged tonight uh, in the pre-show pre music. Uh, St. David's, if that was in Venezuela, the rest, the West would scream, human rights, human rights. You're absolutely right. 100% there. All right. Um, right. Anna, unity! She heard Richie. Love me some Richie. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. She got away. She got a wake up call. She sure did. Of course, that was IDF approved, right? Because that's who trains them. Yeah. Look at that big, strong man wrestling the the tough economics professor to the ground. I've fallen and I can't get up. St. David's on the rumble. <laughs> oh, it says that I'm surprised everyone else is surprised that they act like this. Well, we're not necessarily surprised. Yeah. It just sucks to see. And, you know, they're standing their ground. And, you know, uh, Angel says private universities are ordering police to clear out these protests. And the police are gladly listening because they love kicking people's asses. Yep. And they don't serve yeah. us, of course. They serve power. Um, Anna says that none of them have sons or daughters or family. Well, definitely not Ivy League universities because most of them can't afford it. Right. Or it. You know, um, right. David it says it. I haven't seen any aggressive behavior by any protester, and the cops are acting like psychos. Agreed. How many cops does it take to arrest a suburban mom? I watched the cops wrestle a guy to the ground and, like, hogtie him and then lift him up by his arm, like, the loop of his arm and the loop of his leg and the guy's going, ow, ow, mm -hmm. ow, you're hurting me. And the guy, like, there's a whole group of thread of people laughing at him. I'm like, dude, I'll carry you like that and you tell me that he didn't just dislocate your fucking shoulder and you tell me you're not screaming. What's the matter with you people yeah. tonight? Like, what the hell, man? Like, period, like, seriously, mm -hmm. people are losing their fucking humanity over this shit. Yeah, we've Look got... Look at the I, gaslight. I, I told you we've we've got the unit the unity sound in, in the soundboard that that Reef was gonna pull it out and we, we were gonna yeah. do that. Um I got another Richie tweet later on that we can we can use, but 